Roses are red, violets are blue. Something, something, something. This is a video about dinosaur sex. Also, I'm not wearing pants. Do you ever wonder what dinosaur sex might have looked like? In order to have heterosexual dinosaur sex, we're gonna need a male and we're gonna need a female. But it wasn't until very recently that we were able to determine the sex of a dinosaur based on fossil evidence. Last year at North Carolina State University, a team of paleontologists led by Mary Schweitzer found in a fossilized T-Rex specimen evidence of medullary bone. Now, in extant birds, medullary bone is a special type of tissue that is only present when birds are either laying eggs or have just laid them. So it's a really good indication that that particular T-Rex was either pregnant or had just been pregnant at the time of death. So we've got a female, but now we need a male. Unfortunately, it's a little harder to sex male dinosaurs because we have no evidence in the fossil record of baculums. Baculums are penis bones. In fact, most mammal species have baculums, including chimps and gorillas. Humans, newsflash, do not, except for me because I have one on me at all times. This is from a raccoon. Now there is a little bit of evidence out there with respect to dinosaur mating displays, but I'm pretty sure it went down something like this. I mean, I would totally swipe right for Chloe, are you kidding me? That's one good looking Gigantoraptor. So now it's time to get those two lovebirds together. And I do mean love birds, because obviously we can't go look at two T-Rexes mating. So we have to look at modern corollaries to be able to glean clues about what it was like for extinct dinosaurs to get together. And birds are dinosaurs. Just like humans are a special type of primate, birds are a special type of dinosaur, and the only one that's still alive today. Hashtag birds are dinosaurs. Hashtag birds are dinosaurs. All birds have cloacas. And I like to think of cloacas as kind of like one hole to rule them all. Because it's one hole out of which comes pee, poop, and the sexy time juices. In fact, when birds mate, they practice something called a cloacal kiss where they basically push their cloacas together and the male sprays from that opening the genetic material that impregnates the female. Now, some of the oldest lineages of birds, such as ducks and other waterfowl, do have internal penises that are housed inside the cloaca and come out during time of sexual reproduction. And if you thought I wasn't gonna show you a picture of a seven inch duck penis, again, you're sorely mistaken. So all birds have cloacas but not all birds have penises. It's only marginally helpful when we try to figure out what extinct dinosaur nether bits look like. So let's look at another group of animals that are closely related and actually predate dinosaurs. I'm talking about reptiles such as alligators and crocodiles. Now alligators and crocodiles all have cloacas, but they also all have penises that are housed internally. So the biggest alligators at about 15 feet long only have about five inch penises versus that duck penis we saw earlier is about seven inches long. So if we're gonna take those measurements and extrapolate, try to guess how big a T-Rex penis was, we're looking at anything from the size of a 20 ounce soda bottle to that of a Toyota Camry. So we just don't know a lot about what dinosaur nether bits look like. But that's not even the craziest thing for me. The craziest thing to think about is how these things looked when they actually physically came together to mate. I mean, think about sauropods. Think about Barosaurus or maybe Diplodocus or Titanosaur. These things weighed upwards of 100 tons. If you are a female and you are being mounted, you have to take on the weight of something that literally shook the earth when it walked. And what about ornithischian dinosaurs? Like Stegosaurus, Edmontonia, or Tuajangosaurus. Tuajang, Tuajangae, Tuajangosaurus, Tuajangosaurus? These things were literally covered in plates and spikes. Great for warding off predators, but when it comes time to literally push those bodies together to mate, I don't care how many dinosaur-sized condoms you got, that's never gonna be safe sex. And so, at the end of the day, we just don't know. And dinosaurs remain one of the greatest sexual enigmas in the entirety of the animal kingdom. But, if we've learned anything from Jurassic Park, well, it's that fences don't work, but also that life finds a way. So let that be an inspiration to all you lovebirds at home. Happy Valentine's Day.